Good morning, boys and girls. I am so glad to be able to see you this morning, or I guess be able to speak to you this morning. I can't see you yet. Um, but we are back again this week for our Sunday school lesson. So, can you tell me what we have been doing these last few weeks? These first, where I guess now it's the second Sunday of July, so we're um, midway through summer. Can you tell me what we've been doing this summer? So what videos have we been doing? We have been reviewing our previous year's lessons. So we've taken some of our big lessons that we had last uh, fall and last spring, and we are revisiting those, those big stories of the Old Testament. So if you can be with me, um, if you've been with us in the fall or in the spring, um, these are going to be some lessons that you might remember hearing. Um, we've been going through our first book, which is the book of what? Genesis, the first book of Genesis. That is all about how God created everything. So we've been looking at big characters like Adam and Eve. We've looked at Noah. We've looked at Abraham. Last week, we talked about one of Abraham's descendants. Who can tell me? Do you think you know? Okay, tell, tell your family, tell your parents right now, um, or you'll just say it out loud. We learned about a man named Joseph. And Joseph is an interesting character, one of my favorite characters, because he's the youngest son of many. His brothers and him, they actually are going to form our 12 tribes of Israel because Israel is their father. Remember, Jacob is renamed, and Jacob's new name is Israel. So this is the beginning of our 12 tribes of Israel. Now, Joseph goes to a far-off country his great grandfather, great yeah, his great grandfather went to the same country. Who can tell me where Joseph ends up? Egypt. Yes, Egypt. So Joseph eventually moves in and lives in Egypt for the rest of his life. Okay, so before we dive into our next lesson, so the next big character that comes after Joseph, we're gonna open up in prayer and then we're gonna dive right in. Let's pray. Gracious Father, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you that, Lord, you have given us your word, that you, Lord, have um, shown us who you are through your scriptures. God, I just pray that you would help us to um, enjoy reading these stories, to enjoy seeing who you are. Um, and God, we're learning that you keep your promises. And so, God, we're going to hear another story about, um, about someone who in, encountered your word, encountered your truth, um, and, Lord, is, is blown away by how you keep your promises. Um, Lord, we thank you for all that you are and all that you've done in our hearts. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, boys and girls. So next in line, next big character that we encounter after the story of Joseph, can anybody tell me? Moses. Moses, that's our next big character. So we're going to review um, the first part of Moses' life today. Okay, so I'm going to jump right in, and we are in a new book of the Bible. We are in the second book, so Genesis and then Exodus. Great, so Exodus is our second book of the Bible. Um, in the Old Testament, we are going to look at Exodus and see what happens starting in verse 8. Now, there arose a new king over Egypt. Now, what is the, what is the title um, that the Egyptians used for their king. It starts with a P. Can you tell me what word the Egyptians used for their kings? What, what, what are they called? They're called pharaohs. Yes, so pharaoh. That was the title for this king. Now, this king, this pharaoh, did not know who Joseph was. So even though Joseph, who had done so many great things, who had uh, helped Egypt during their feast and during their famine, during their years when they didn't have any food, and Joseph was helping to distribute the food, and Joseph became very popular. He was, he was second in command behind the Pharaoh. But it had been so long that this Pharaoh didn't know Joseph. In fact, he didn't really care about it anymore. And he said to his people, Behold, the people of Israel are too many and too mighty for us. Come. Let us deal shrewdly. Let's deal harshly. Let's be mean to them. Lest, unless they multiply and, and they're going to grow, their population is going to continue to grow. And if war breaks out, they may join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. So, therefore, they set taskmasters 
So people, Egyptians who'd be in charge to oversee them, over them to afflict them, so to hurt them. And <sighs> with heavy burdens. And they built for Pharaoh store, store cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied, and the more they spread abroad. And the Egyptians were in dread of the people of Israel. The Egyptians began to despise them, hate them. They, they didn't like them. And they were living amongst them in their cities. So they ruthlessly made the people of Israel work as slaves and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and all kinds of work in the field. In all their work, they ruthlessly made them work as slaves. Then the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra, and the other Pua, when you serve as a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them on the birth stool. If it is a son, you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, she shall live. So, boys and girls, this is a really sad part of our story because the Egyptians are looking at the Israelites as people that have been um, uh, allowed by the previous pharaohs to, to stay and to find refuge, to, to live and to work and to be a part of the Egyptian culture and society. And the, and the Israelites were their own. They had their own ways of doing things. They worshiped God in their own way. So they, they were a little bit different. They, they might have looked different. They might have smelled different. They might have ate different things, eaten different things. But boys and girls, what Scripture tells us right here in this passage is that Pharaoh and, and the Egyptians living begin to build up this anger, this hatred for this entire people. Boys and girls, this is evil. This is evil. God tells us at the very beginning that he has made men and he has made women in his image. He has made his people in his image. And he has chosen the Israelites to be um, his chosen people. And, and they are going to show the world that God loves his creation. That God is going to rescue his people. And it's not going to just be the Israelites who are saved. It's going to be for us who aren't Israelites. We are Gentiles. It was also going to be including the Egyptians. It was going to include every nation. Every nation is going to be able to get to know who Jesus is. And that was going to happen through the Israelites. And God was using this people. Boys and girls, we see in this beginning of Exodus that Pharaoh and the Egyptians, they just have a lot of hatred, a lot of anger to this people. So much so that they enslave them they make them work uh, until they're sway, until they're hungry, until they're broken and tired. And they beat them. And boys and girls, it goes so far that Pharaoh makes it a, a rule, it makes it a law that any Israelite boy who's born must be killed. Boys and girls, this is evil. This is just evil. And it's heartbreaking. And boys and girls, that's where Moses is born. Moses enters into this world in this incredibly painful part of Israel's story and Egypt, Egypt's past. And Moses is born, and his mother does this incredible thing where she hides Moses. She hides Moses from the Egyptians, and she breaks this, this terrible law that goes against everything who God is. And she hides him. Now, it, it must have been so hard to hide a baby, right? Because babies do what? What do babies do when they get sad or when they get hungry or when they get tired? They cry. They cry. And so she could only hide Moses for so long. She could only keep him protected for so long. And that's what she's longing to do. So what she does is she does something incredibly heartbreaking. She's so trusting that God is going to take care of Moses that she takes Moses and she puts Moses into a basket and in that basket she takes that and she puts it in the Nile River and and she sends her daughter to kind of watch along the river as Moses goes down this river and so the sister stood at a distance we're in chapter 2 verse 4 and his sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe in the river while her young woman walked beside the river, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her servant woman. 
And she took it. And when she opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the baby was crying. She took pity on him and said, This is the one of those Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call you a nurse from the Hebrew woman to nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Said this daughter got to go get her mom and say, Mom, I, the, the Pharaoh's daughter is looking for somebody to nurse this baby. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses because, she said, I drew him out of the water. So this very first part of the story is amazing because God is rescuing Moses. He is keeping his promise to his children, but he is specifically rescuing Moses from great danger. The Egyptians are out to get all of these Israelite boys. Now, it's amazing that God uses Pharaoh's own daughter to rescue Moses. And not only that, but Pharaoh, or Moses' mother gets to take care of him. And this is important because, boys and girls, Moses would have learned about who he was. He would have learned about who God was, who the Israelites worshipped. He would have learned of their, their ways that they did things, the celebrations that they had, the feasts that they had. He would have known who he was. Now, one day, when Moses had grown up, so Moses is, has grown up, he's lived in Pharaoh's cast, our temple, uh, he's lived in Pharaoh's palace, excuse me, and, and one day, when he had grown up, he went out to his people, because he knew who he was, and he looked on their burdens, and he saw that. He saw that they were still enslaved, working hard, and his heart oh, must have been angry and sad all at the same time, and he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. And so he looked this way and that, and seeing no one, thinking he could get away with it, he struck down the Egyptian. So he murdered the Egyptian, and he hid him in the sand. Because he saw, he, have you ever done this? And, and not, not murdering an Egyptian, but have you ever looked, and kind of when you're about to do something, you kind of know you should be doing, you kind of double check to see if anybody's around to see you do it. And maybe it's something as small as grabbing a, a cookie from the cookie jar, you know, watching a little extra TV when you're not supposed to, or whatever it might be. But you, you know deep down the thing you're about to do goes against the rules. The thing that you're about to do is, is you've been told that you're not supposed to do it. And so you kind of look around to see if anybody's watching. Because if there's nobody watching, right, then you can get away with it. So he hit him in the sand. When he went out the next day, behold, two Hebrews were struggling together. This time, it wasn't an Egyptian and a Hebrew. It was, a, it was two Hebrew men. And he said to the man who in the, who in the wrong, so the one who had caused the fight, why do you strike your companion? Why are you fighting amongst yourselves? And the Hebrew answered, Who made you a prince and a judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? So his secret had already been shared. Then Moses was afraid and thought, Surely the thing is known. Surely I've been caught. So when Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses does what everyone does when we make a big mistake. When we make a sin, when we sin against God, we, we disobey our parents or we disobey. He does something that we all have done. He flees. He flees. He runs away. He maybe, you know, for some of us, we run away um, and we try to hide maybe in our rooms or we hide under beds or we hide in the closets or we, we try to avoid getting in trouble. But Moses flees from Pharaoh and he stays in the land of Midian. And, and Midian is where... Um, he, he's going and seeing um, his mother's people. So he's going out and leaving. And now Moses fled from Pharaoh into Midian, and he sat down by a well. So he's, he's running away from his past. He's running away from his mistakes. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. The shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and saved them and watered their flock. When they came home to their father, Raoul, he said, How is it that you have come home so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and even drew water for us and watered the flock. 
he said to his daughters, And where is he? Why have you left the man? Call him, that he may eat bread. And then Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses his daughter, Zipporah. And she gave birth to a son, and he called her Gershom. For he said, I have been a sojourner in a foreign land. So, during those days, the king of Egypt died. And the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry for rescue from slavery came up to God, and God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw the people of Israel, and God knew. Now, boys and girls, this is a, and it's such an important passage for us to hear because, boys and girls, God hears our cries. He hears our tears. He hears when we pray to him. Even when we pray out of sadness, even when we pray out of anger and frustration, boys and girls, God hears us. He sees and knows our hearts. He hears our words. And boys and girls, in this, in this point in our story, the Israelites have been enslaved. Their, their boys have been um, killed by the Egyptians when they're born. They've been forced to build all of these things for the Pharaoh and for the Egyptians, and they've been beaten by the Egyptians, and their life is hard and struggling. And it seems like it's never going to end. And boys and girls, I, I, we can't imagine what they were going through from our own life experience. But boys and girls, I can imagine that their hearts were just totally broken. That their spirits were wearing, that their energy was wearing down. And that each new day didn't seem very bright. And, and each new day didn't seem very hopeful. And it would have been really hard. And we can look out and we can see our own experience in this pandemic. We can see and look out our own experience with um, our neighbors who are going through hard things. Maybe our friends, parents have lost jobs. Maybe maybe our parents have lost jobs or or maybe that we're uncertain of when school is going to start back we're reading in the news and seeing that uh, people are hurting because of our country's history with race and the color of our skin and in much the same way um, boys and girls we have an easy way an easy time it is easy for us to look at others who don't look like us who don't sound like us, who don't speak like us or smell like us or do the same things that we do, it's very easy for us to cast judgment or to look down on them. So boys and girls, we're experiencing things that we can look in the story and say, oh, I know a little bit about what might be going on with them. I know a little bit about how they might be feeling. And boys and girls, their response is to cry out to God for rescuing. Their posture, the way that they're holding themselves, is to reach out to God and ask for help, believing that he is their only rescue. Now, they're not doing it with laughter or with great joy. They're, they're probably crying out with pain and sorrow and maybe even anger. But they're crying out. God to rescue them. Now, boys and girls, what's amazing about where God is drawing Moses, this man who is who's not great, he's murdered an Egyptian. He's, he's not the best person to lead the nation, but God is going to call him here to listen to his voice. He's going to speak to him in this amazing way. He, and Moses is, is out tending the flock for his father-in-law Jethro and the priest of Midian, and he leads his flock to the west side of the wilderness and he comes to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appears to him in the flame of a bush. So this bush is next to him and it's on fire. And Moses encounters God in a very real way. He sees this flame. He sees this bush that's not burning. And this bush talks to him. So these two events are amazing. Like we can't imagine um, what it must have been like for Moses to, to be shocked, right? If you were walking doing your job or doing your chores and all of a sudden this bush was on fire but it wasn't burning and then it started talking to you. It would be absolutely insane. It would be crazy. It would be a miracle. But Moses has this incredible encounter with God. 
He tells him who he is. He tells him that he's on holy ground, that he's encountering God. And then he says, I have seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their suffering. So, boys and girls, just like this, we don't know their sufferings, but God does. And I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land. A land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanites and Hittites and the Amorites and the Prezerites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I also see the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Boys and girls, the moment where God calls Moses to lead his people out. Now Moses, again, isn't a great great guy. He's murdered an Egyptian for um, hurting uh, one of his Hebrew brothers. He fled from a consequence. He fled when he was, um, he should have, he didn't have a, the courage to stay and, 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 and face the, uh, the trial that would have ensued. He, he flees. But God calls him to lead. Moses later tells us that he, he doesn't know how to speak to Pharaoh. He's going to stutter. He, he's not courageous enough to do this. And God says, no, I'm going to give you the words. I'm going to show you how to lead these people out. Because, in fact, it's going to be me leading these people. And you're going to be in, in my, my voice at times. You're going to be my, um, my right arm at times. You're going to be the, the what Pharaoh sees. You're going to be the visible leader of this group right now. But it's going to be me leading this nation. It's going to be me leading them to a place of safety. Because I'm going to show them that I have the ability to make a man like you, who doesn't deserve to be a leader, I have an ability to make you the leader of Israel. So boys and girls, as we continue to hear about how God is keeping his promise, it's so easy to read these first few chapters and to see these hundreds of years where God has seemingly forgotten his, his people. The people he has promised he was taken to take care of and take them to the promised land. He promised that to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. He promised that to Joseph and, and, the, and the brothers. And it's so easy to look at this story and say, man, I, I can understand if these Israelites give up. I can understand that. And it's so amazing that they don't. It's so amazing that they continue to have faith. But it's even more incredible that God works out his promise in exactly the time that he's planned it. Because he is holy. He is a God who keeps his word with us. And he is leading us, leading these Israelites to safety, redeeming them out of their bondage. And so, boys and girls, for us, he is leading us out of our captivity, our bondage, the sin that is in our hearts, the sin that, is, that makes us want to hide like Moses did and flee. Jesus is coming. He came thousands of years ago. He came 2,000 years ago, and he died on the cross for us so that our sin could be forgiven, that God would not hold us accountable for that sin anymore, that he would not look at us and see judgment but lord but that he would see jesus perfect life for us and so when he returns we're going to get to spend eternity with him glorifying him praising him worshiping him celebrating that he has kept his promise that he is who he says he is that he is the creator of all he is the redeemer of all he has made every single one of us every color every nation, every language, we are his. And boys, we also get to learn from this story how, how we're expected to be. We're expecting to cry out to God when we are in, in need. We're expected to look at our brothers and sisters, to look at our neighbors and our friends, to look at our enemies with love. We get to read about how the Egyptians treated the Israelites and ask ourselves, do we treat others like that? Do we treat those in houses down the street that might not look as nice as ours? Or across the part of the city that's a little bit dirtier and a little bit 
not quite as colorful or pretty? Do we look at them and say, uh, do I have to talk to them? Do I have to love them? Do I have to be nice to them? God is showing us that his people has endured great suffering and he is loving them and rescuing them because he's created them, he's chosen them. And boys and girls, the invitation for us to join that family is very real. It's, a, it's an incredibly important, incredibly powerful to us for, for us to remember that we get to be a part of this family too. So boys and girls, I hope, I hope that this week you remember that the Israelites called out to God in their suffering. And they prayed to him in, in anger and in sorrow and in sadness. And we get to do that as well. We get to cry out to God and know that he hears our prayers. Know that he understands our pain, no matter what it is. And that he is a God who draws near to us and rescues us from our suffering. Let's pray. God, I just thank you so much for... Um, what you've shown us, Lord, that you have rescued us. God, this story of, uh, Lord, the Israelites who have experienced great pain and great sorrow, Lord, you, Lord, you heard their prayers. Lord, you heard their anger. You heard their upset hearts and their voices. And Lord, you, you decided to rescue them exactly when you did through the exact leader you chose, Moses. It wasn't a leader who was great, who was strong and courageous. It wasn't a leader who was the most well-spoken. It wasn't a leader who had done everything right. But Lord, it was a leader that you were going to use, that you were going to equip, that you were going to give the right tools, and that you were going to lead ultimately. God, I pray for just where we are right now with the pandemic and numbers increasing and uncertainty with when school's going to start back or when um, events are going to start back. God, I pray that you would hear us, Lord, that you would hear our sadness, that you would hear our hurting hearts and be with us. Father, I, I pray for all the unrest, Lord, all of our brothers and sisters, Lord, are African-American who are, Lord, suffering and, and who have, are tired and hurting and, um, in this country, Lord, and who know who you are and who cry out to you as well asking to be heard and asking to be um, taken care of god we just pray that you would rescue lord us as a nation lord rescue us as a people help us to love those who um, lord, we don't automatically and easily love help us to see our neighbors now help us to see those who um, lord, we we might not always see Help us to love them as you loved them, Lord, whether they're Christians or not. Help us to take care of the weak, take care of the sick, take care of the needy. Lord, give us those, um, those desires. Give us that eye to see those needs. Father, I pray for our health. Um, Lord, I just pray for anybody that uh, in that church who's gotten sick. Um, Father, we just know that you are a God who listens. You are a God who hears the, the cries and the, the prayers of your people and you respond Lord you really do heal and you really do rescue and you really do lead us Lord to the promised land that you have provided God help us to have courage to believe in that help us to have courage to look forward to that and Lord it's in the uh, power of your name the great I am you tell us that in the story that you are and you always will be. And so, Father, we, we just continue to pray that. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, boys and girls. Well, I hope that you enjoyed our lesson this morning. Again, I cannot wait to see you again soon. And until then, I love you and I miss you. And I am praying for you. So have a great beginning of your week. We will talk to you soon. All right, bye. <music>